Hello friends, and welcome to a new episode of the Just Another Mindset podcast. We need a paradigm shift if it comes to our economic and social systems. Let us drive this change together. The Just Another Mindset podcast shares inspiration and tangible techniques on how to create seismic shifts in an outdated system, collectively and for individuals alike. My name is Ismail, and each week I bring to you a relevant conversation, message or theme that will not only entertain you, but help you to change towards a more meaningful and satisfying life. Get encouraged by listening to successful thought leaders, inspiring individuals and impressive change makers. Change from within will last and create positive results for all of us. Let us get inspired and embrace collective changes for the better. In today's episode, I had the great joy to talk to Fred, who is a John C. Maxwell certified speaker, trainer and coach with a passion for helping people and organizations challenge paradigms and mindsets that hold them back. He hosts the Time with Fred inspirational podcast, and he is also the author of the book Believe, Dare, Become. In this episode, we talk about what you believe and dare influence who you become. Life has some curveballs ready for all of us. Fred shares some personal experience today, and you will hear about his perspective on luck. We talk about perseverance and some common traits of great icons. You will learn about belief systems and we discuss best practices and following your gut feeling. Fred shares with us which season he is currently living through in life. And finally, you will hear how you can live a more present life with strong relationships. I would like to use a quote from your book, Fred, and it reads, When you experience setbacks or challenges in life, You can have a fatalistic outlook and believe nothing will ever work right. Or you can choose to believe that despite the challenges, something meaningful can come out of them. And Fred, I don't know if you are, but if you are willing to share a major curveball that life threw at yourself, and how did you deal with it? To give an example, that would be interesting. Well, there's an organization here uh, in the... uh... Richmond, Virginia area. This was a position that I felt I was very qualified for. I was excited about the role and I I went through the interview and I felt really good about the role and came out of that and expecting that I was going to get this job, right? And so I I was waiting to hear back from the recruiter and a week went by, I didn't hear anything. And then I got, I got a, it was actually a a letter back in, I guess they weren't using email, whatever. So they emailed me a letter. They sent me a letter and uh, opened the letter and it was one of those quotes essential, you know, we enjoy talking to you, but for some reason we decided to pick someone else, which was very disappointing nonetheless. And there was something within me smile that that didn't sit right. I felt like they may have missed something. Typically I don't do that, right? And um, but I decided to give them a call and just say, hey, you know, get a sense of what, you know, went wrong with the interview. And um they said that I had indicated in the interview that I wasn't particularly um, I didn't like that product and serve. Like, who does that? Who goes to an interview and and and, and says to them that they they didn't like or didn't believe in whatever they weren't too particularly um, well versed in their product. Anyway, long story short, I I decided to leave it alone. And um, after much wrestling, you know, I I was like, okay, well, I did my best. I'm gonna leave this alone, and um, so would we'll, would find something else. And uh, not too long after that, we're watching the evening news and that same company that I'd interviewed with, um, workers had showed up Monday morning um, and were told that the company had shut down. No advance notice, no warning, everyone got a pink slip right at the gate in the interview the news was covering in and I was sitting in the living room. My wife actually called me to come take a look at it and I was just flabbergasted. I was watching the news and I was like, wow, this is something that I, I, was, I was fighting for. This is something that I really wanted to get and you know, if I had gotten this job like I wanted to, in my own understanding, I would have I would have ended up as one of this 
uh, companies, employees who, who, who didn't have a job. That's one story that I share in every time I talk about, you know, some of these detours in life. And um, it was a curveball, right? It was a curveball, but I could have stayed in that situation. I could have stewed. I could have moped and complained and whined and griped. But I, I, I did a fair bit of that, but I was also quick enough to realize, look, okay, if one door closes, another one is going to open up. And and that's exactly what happens. We, we go through life and we run into our positions we run into challenges in life and and at that moment we become so fixated we can't seem to move past that and so many people are trapped they're caught in that trap of um you know the past you know the disappointment and can't seem to move past that right but it, it was it was a curveball that life threw at me but i snapped out of that i used that opportunity to apply for other jobs and i ended up getting a much better job and uh, in fact the manager who interviewed me for this position that I didn't get ended up being a colleague or a peer at the new company um, that I that I ended up working at. So life has very interesting ways of uh, you know teaching us lessons if we are only inclined to listen and pay attention and use some of those life experiences to serve as a launching pad to move us on uh, in life. They're not fun. They're not exciting, and I'm not saying that. But yes, we get disappointed. Yes, we're 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 not happy, but. Let's not get stuck. Let's not allow those experiences to keep us grounded. Let's let's use that as a launching pad and see what we can learn from it and, and, and keep moving on. There's so many other opportunities in life. One door closes, many other doors open. And there's a quote I can remember with familiar quote that says, like, oftentimes we keep staring at this closed door so much that we don't pay attention to the other open doors uh, that are right in front of us. And what I hear, Fred, is also that it's somewhat necessary to experience some closed doors in order to develop and grow i don't know if you have any thoughts on that absolutely it's all about the growth process right i mean life is is no pollyanna we can think positive we can wish i mean i like positivity thinking i have several books behind me that talk about that so, so yes i i don't undermine that but but life has lessons if, even in those challenging moments right if we if we look carefully enough there's always that silver lining. There's always that that lesson, right? There's always that opportunity to grow. And I like that word grow, because if we don't experience it, you know, our faith is not developed where 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 we 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 don't mature, right? We don't we don't learn those life essential life lessons that I feel that we have to learn. So it's all about growth, right? We go through it. Yeah, this may suck, this may not be fun, but what can I learn? How can I grow? How can this make me better? Right? It's all about the perspective that we uh, that we can glean from these experiences if we, if we look at it the right way. When we talk about learning and growth, I would be very interested, Fred, to hear from you how you define luck and how each of us can maybe improve our chances for being more lucky. Luck? Hmm. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't believe in luck. Uh, I, I'd say that. I believe that time and chance happens to us all, right? I believe that you know, when when preparation meets opportunity, luck happens, right? You, you're believing for something to happen. I mean, I hear people say, I, I got lucky. Yes, I mean, time and chance may happen, but my real definition of luck, if I have to define it, is when preparation meets opportunity. You want something so bad in the future, let's say you want to, you know, get to, you know, level five or whatever it is. And what are you doing right now in your level one moment to to help you, you know, get to level five, right? It's the learnings, right? The personal development. That's what we're doing this podcast. What can you do now to help you get ready for that opportunity when it comes? That's what luck is because if that opportunity comes and you're not ready for it, you're not prepared for it, you're going to fail, Right. And, and then you blame, we blame all the factors around us. But if you're prepared for it and the opportunity comes, boom, it's luck. There is a story that I share in the book about uh, Nia uh, Verdalos, um, the I think she 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 was she starred in the, um, the, the movie My My Big Fat Greek Wedding, uh, which was a big hit. I remember watching that movie. I think it was I was in London at the time. And it talks about how uh, Nia got um, became famous. She was she spent she went to school and studied um, drum and theater, and she was looking for that big gig. She was she was looking for that lucky moment, right? But 
it didn't come easy. She was doing comedies and, you know, local, local joints and things like that. And one day she was performing this one person comedy and um, uh, one famous uh, actor's wife um, happened to be in the audience. And so after that, she decided to, to, to talk to Nia about it and wanted her to give her the cast and she talked to her husband and then she became a pick, she, she, she got picked for this particular uh, movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and then the rest is history, Nia now stars and, you know, several other uh, movies, but it was that preparation, right? It was that she was ready for it. So when the opportunity came, one would say that she got lucky but I believe that it was because she was prepared. She went through the lessons, she waited. And when that right moment came, luck, luck happened, right? So. It brings up another thought of mine. We can stick with this example or go for another one. But when you talk about Nia and how she went through all different types of engagements, it sounds like she has shown a lot of perseverance. And I would be very interested how do you personally persevere or how can each and every one of us learn to persevere and get a better understanding for that? Yeah, uh, great. Another great question. I was actually being interviewed a couple of days ago, actually, um, on another podcast where we're talking about getting ready for, for promotion or how to set one up for promotion in, in the workplace. And one of the uh, the things we talked about was, you know, how does someone deal with, you know, you're, you're looking for a job and, you know, you you keep applying over and over again and, and, and you don't get it. How, how do you keep that? How do you keep that motivation going? And I can count, you know, several people whose names are, you know, typical household names. Now we can call them celebrities. We can call them, you know, greatest people in all time. Einstein, Thomas Edison, KFC. Um Walt Disney, uh, Sidney Poitier, the late Sidney Poitier, and all these other people that are icons, or that were icons, some of them are, are, are past, they're, they're gone now, but none of them got where they are, you know, by by um, starting something once and and, um, and, and hitting a big um, KFC. He, at age 65, when he was not happy living on a social security, um, however many few hundred dollars a month at the time he could have he could have stayed where he was and said look hey, i'm down up work 65 years old i'm just gonna sit on my front porch and give it up that's when he actually started dreaming and he came up with this famous chicken recipe and, and started touring you know the whole of the united states looking for someone to buy that chicken recipe or looking for someone to sponsor it research or based on things that we've read he uh, apparently went around over 1000 times to find someone to buy that chicken recipe what if he had stopped at number five what if he had said well i've done this i'm 65 years i'm old and i'm and i'm gonna try this again one more time what if he had stopped at number six what if he had stopped at number seven what if he had stopped at number eight number 10 number 20 number 25 number 50 even what if he had stopped at number 100 based on what we know about that story he went over and he tried over 1000 times before he got someone to say yes and today kfc is a household name now right a place that we all like to go get chicken you know, every now and then if you if you meet lava that is right but that is perseverance that is perseverance we we if you believe in something bad enough and someone say well you know insanity is doing something over and over again and getting the same results yes but but I'm sure he changed his strategy, right? We, we you got to change your strategy too, right? If you're doing the same thing, okay, you're using the same, but you got to learn, you know, what can I learn, right? Or you apply for that job, you don't get it, you know, okay, fine. What can I learn? Is it my interviewing skills? Is it maybe getting feedback from a recruiter? Um, is, is it maybe brushing up on my resume a little bit? Is it is it my confidence level? Is it my communication? Is it my my, my poise? Right? There are so many things that we can learn. So, yes, we want to persevere. Yes, right. But even in the midst, even in the process, let's make sure that we are learning from the past and not repeating those same tactics. Right. So, you you know you leave point one. You know level one. You leave level two. What do you do? Learn from level one that can make level two better. What did you learn from level two that can make level three better, right? And so on and forth, so forth. But you can't stop just because you hit a, 
uh, uh, a roadblock, right? You know, just because you, you did something once or twice and three times. Patience level in the world today has gone really, really low. People don't have it anymore, right? Because we're so used to instant gratification. You want it now, you can have it. And so we're not able to develop that resiliency or that perseverance, right? Even, you know, among the younger generation, I'm, I'm still young, by the way, but that patience level, I think, is something that the generation today don't have because you want something, you get it instantaneously, right? So we're not able to develop that grit. Uh, that's that's a rare find these days. Nonetheless, I think I think that's a very powerful one because I, I wonder how many how many people listen. Now, how many of us have given up on an idea, you know, that could have hit big if we tried one more time, two more times, three more times, four more times, even? How many of us have abandoned? businesses or or, or or scientific breakthroughs or huge opportunities if we are stuck to it one more time if we're taking that extra step or maybe that extra two steps if we are trying maybe three more steps if we're talking to one more person knock on one more door right taking that one more that 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 last qualification what could we have gotten out of what what we're, we're pursuing so perseverance yes it's painful we don't like to do it oh gosh i've done this again i just don't i just don't have time for this right but how many things you know have we left perhaps um untouched how many opportunities and how many missed opportunities are we are we have we not realized just because we failed to try one more time and it's interesting and you talk about this perseverance, this patience, this grit, and you mentioned a few, you call them icons. And I wonder if there are other commonalities or something that those icons may have in common. I know you liked also to talk about belief systems. And yeah, maybe you have some thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah. I think some of that um, are things that we've probably heard, you know, growing up or things that uh, the subconscious mind probably have bought into maybe growing up, you know, there are people who I've interviewed on this on my podcast who were told by family members that they wouldn't, you know, amount to much. And some were told they couldn't go to college because no one in, in that family um, went to college, but they defied the odds and went to college and, and made something better out of their lives. Right. So it's this social upbringing. It's the cultural upbringing. It's what we've been wired to believe what others have said maybe other people's experiences, right, that they, uh, that, that they're passing on to us, our own experiences, our own mind, and what we have, have bought into. And I'm sure with some of these icons, you know, I'm sure they were told, you know, that they they, they, they couldn't do that. I mean, Sidney Poitier, the late Sidney Poitier, who I, I, I love um, uh, so much, uh, he was told when he was, you know, starring, coming up, as, and he was told to go wash dishes just because he wasn't good enough. And he wanted to become one of the greatest actors of all time, right? If he had allowed, what if he had listened to that expert or, or, or the critic who, who told him, you know, that he wouldn't amount to anything, he wasn't cut, he didn't have the skills and what it took to, to add. And what, what if he had stuck with, with washing dishes? One of the uh, guests I had the pleasure of interviewing, uh, Lois Letchford on my podcast, um, has a powerful story. Her son, you know, he she, she was in Cambridge at the, though England at the time, and you know, her son was in school and you know wasn't doing well. And the teachers, the experts, uh, told her son, uh, told her that her son wouldn't amount to much, and she was he wasn't smart enough, and you know he he wasn't catching on with the lessons, and you know, so Lois did what. Not a lot of us could do. Of course, she had the ability to. Not everyone can do that. So I want to be mindful of that. She brought her son home and decided to homeschool her son. So she, you know, developed, uh, you know, the, the curriculum that she thought was well catered to, that his son could relate to. The son uh, went on to earn a PhD from, uh, from Oxford University. This is someone who was told that um, he was dumb, you know, essentially couldn't amount to anything, right? But she defied the odds. Um, and um, and it, and there's so many of these stories that I hear smile that, that does something to me, right? She could have easily given up and and bought into the so-called expert advice of uh, of the teachers, the misguided teachers who told her son that um, you know she he wouldn't amount to anything. What what if, what if she'd agreed with? Them? 
what what it, what it shouldn't try where I put that time of uplet to right so again some of these opinions and things yes I'm not saying we shouldn't listen to what teachers I mean my my wife is an educator and have a lot of respect for educators what I'm saying is that we need to be careful whose advice we're listening to whose advice we're buying into right and so many people's life dreams you know have been cut short just because they listened to some so-called expert and didn't do anything for their lives so finding and then also following your own path so knowing where you're going for and a question that came to mind while you were talking is fred how often do you follow your gut feeling and why i'm training it's still it's still a developmental thing right there are times and, and we all have this we all I believe we're all created with that with that discernment as i like to call it we, we all have that knowing it's inside of us and, and we know it right how many times have we hear, heard people say you know something told me or, or the miss something i knew it because I, i heard that voice right we've, we've all been wired we all have that inability to discern um i, I think as, as humans that's that's one of the gifts that uh, we we have But I think it's in allowing the distractions of, of this world, right, to cloud those 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 judgments. So yes, I mean there, and, and I'm still training myself. There are times that I I I I I, I hear it, and and sometimes it gnaws at you. It's, it's it keeps coming back to you, and it's it's quiet, and it's and even though everything around you would be saying no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, but 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 you hear that still voice. You know when you know, right? I I can't explain that, but it's. You know it. It's 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 a, it's a feeling there that just doesn't go away, right? But oftentimes, oh well, it's just a feeling. We ignore it, and then something happens. It's like ah, I knew it because I, I heard it. I should have listened to that voice, right? It's it's there, but I think we all need to take some time to. And that's why I like some of these alone times, right? Just you know, whether it's meditation and, and prayer, I, I like to do that and just and just and just focus and not allow the distractions of this world because you know you wake up and you know first thing we do you know we're grabbing our phones and before we know it, we've lost track or we're reading and, and following all this silly things you know well, social media and all that stuff and and it clouds our own judgment our ability to hear to listen to just focus a little bit and 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 uh, and, 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 and and be thoughtful right and 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 in and our, and our planning I, I wish I could tell you that I get it all the time. There are, there are times that, that I miss it, but there are times that I get it right too. And those are the times that I realize, you know, perhaps I need to pay more attention in, in, in to my intuition and maybe spending more time and listening, focus and quiet time and, and allow myself to be guided by that. Um, some of, you know, the big decisions that I've made, which ended up being great decisions were because I followed that, that gut instinct. I, I prayed and meditated and, And felt led that those were the right decisions, in spite of, you know, the the the, the contrary evidence and things that uh, I I could have easily fall into, right? So, it, it's still a work in progress. I still I still miss it sometimes, but um, I'm 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 still learning to to listen and uh, pay attention to to that. No, wonderful, and I believe it's also perfectly fine that it is a work in progress, and I think it is indeed a process or a progress. It is, and you, you gave a few keywords, it is something that you hear and something that you feel. And for those who are not watching, you were also gesturing and I could see that you talk about those feelings, right? So oftentimes, I believe, even though we get all this distraction from outside, we feel what's best for us. And sometimes we have the capability, the resources or the construct to act on it. And sometimes we do not. And that is perfectly fine and right another thing that you talked about is distractions or how to be less distracted and i would be very interested if you have some kind of rituals or routines that you want to share with us as in every day or once a year or every quarter i don't know if anything comes to mind Yeah, I'll call it a ritual. I think they're just best practices, right? I mean, there people do different things. I mean, I've heard people who go on a, a media fast. You know, they're you know every every weekend. I talked to someone actually on a on my podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he I think he said on on Sundays he's um, he he practices. Um, I think his uh, his uh, his of a Jewish origin, and uh, and that's something that that he does. He you know just shuts off, uh, shuts down you know social media um, on Sunday 
or a week or whatever. He doesn't, um, it's not, it's not a ritual. It's, it's something that they do. And I've heard people do that as well. I've seen friends who would say, okay, I'm, I'm shutting down, I'm going off social media for the weekend. You know, I'm just going to disconnect a little bit. So, either, you know, best practice. It's, it's, it's really what, whatever works for me. It's really that uh, finding time in the morning to, just to think. Um, I like to think, meditate. Um, some people like to call it just to, uh, just not allow, you know, before I, you know, grab up that phone or, or, or hit the road and, and get to work. I just like time to, to think and, and reflect a little bit, right? And, and it's in those moments um, of, of reflection that that I get ideas. Another silly one um, that, you know, audience might find silly is I'll, in the shower. I mean, I find taking showers. Uh, my wife tells me I take very long showers because I, I, I tend to think a lot, just allowing that hot water to, to just hit my back and just, you know, just, I, I get a lot of great ideas uh, in, in the shower, right? It's not, it's not prescriptive 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 no it's not prescriptive right it's it's really what works uh for you so it's it's finding that moment that zone where you know you're at peace where you, you your mind is clear where you can just focus on, on life whether it's prayer people do that prayer bible reading it's great if you're a christian spiritual person it's nothing wrong with that but um you know that that works too so it's it's i can't say for a fact that you know everyone has to but finding whatever works for you whether it's really just making that um, attempt to just, you know, putting down the phone or maybe spending some quiet time in the morning, um, maybe whether it's walking through the park and just, just allowing your mind to think a little bit, right? It's, uh, I think we all, we all need that. Um, we all need to unplug every, every now and then. And it's really what works for you. For me, it's really just finding time in the morning just to think a little bit in the shower, as I said, you know, silly idea, but that's really where I just tend to that's why I'm alone, right? No distraction. I'm just there. It's just it's me in the hot water, the shower. I just want to think a little bit, but it's really what works. Uh, my life, my wife likes to uh, meditate by by the water. Maybe she should go to the beach and walk by the water. And that's when she feels that sense of calm and you know all that. So it's really what works for folks. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I actually have two follow-up questions. And you said what works and finding what works. How can one find for yourself what works and what doesn't? Is it by experimenting? Yeah, I, I think it's by experimenting. And, and, and when something works, you know, right, you see the results, right? Maybe you try something and, oh, I feel good today, right? I mean, this this is good, right? Um, and yeah, you just got to keep finding, or maybe listen to what other people, you know, maybe it's just walking. Try, try that. Just try, try, try different things. Try unplugging. It, it all depends on what tends to take your attention, right? If it's the phone that distracts you, Maybe shut it off, you know, try a couple of hours. People just can't seem to disconnect. You know, they leave their phones and the thing that's the end of the world, right? I know we depend on it so much, but maybe we try maybe one hour, maybe two hours and see what that does to you. You may have those withdrawal symptoms like, you know, like the whole world's crumbling down. Or maybe try try taking a walk. You know, if it's if it's the office that you get stressed, and I do that, right? You're at work and you, I tend to just walk away a little bit. I'll, I'll take a walk. The weather is good. I'll, I'll walk around the block and just leave my phone, leave everything and just, and just enjoy. One of the things I, I shared, um, you know, we talked about in another podcast was when we're on, a, on lockdown. Lockdown was one of those things that really tested a lot of things, right? We, we of course couldn't go anywhere. And so we'll take walks in our, in our, in our neighborhood, right here in our neighborhood. And it's funny, we've been living in this, in our neighborhood for, for years now. And there were things that we realized about our neighborhood that we didn't realize. It was, it was a piece peace the peacefulness it was just the, the beauty that that we we had missed all of as well because you get up in the morning get in the car and, and zoom 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 right you tend to miss out on some of these things right but sometimes you're forced to recognize the opportunities that you have around you and uh, and you realize oh I didn't, I didn't notice this was here it's been here all along right it's just because we've been so busy with our lives so try that try taking a walk you know just try shutting down the phone Try just sitting still. Maybe it's a, it's a good book. You know, not everyone's a reader. That's great. Maybe find a podcast like this that we're doing now. There's so many great lessons, right? And things like that you can learn. But whatever, just just try to spend time with you um, and, uh, and and see if those works. Uh, if, if those work. The things that will work, of course, are a distraction, right? You find people just piling on and piling on and piling on and we become so stressed just because we can't. We can't say no, right? We're saying yes to everything, liking everything, right? And you know, we we need we need that people call it work life balance. Um, but health, you know, that's a good sign of what's not working. If you stop constantly, that is something telling you that, that something is not working. So 
How can you de-stress? How can you take a break? Um, there's so many people who are sick, not because um, it's, it's stress. Stress, you know, has been known to bring on all sorts of ailments, right? So let's let's take a pause. Let's let's find time to unwind, do things that matter, spend time with family, uh, relationships, let go of hurts and pain and bitterness. Um, all these things are simple things that we can do. These things aren't working. Um, this, the world's going to give us too much, so much um, to stress us out. It's up to us, really. It's really as we own it. We have to make um, those, take that step, make make that effort to, to take care of ourselves. And it's also, again, it spins back to the perspective you have on the things, on the environment and on the situations in your very own life, right? And what I also found very interesting earlier in today's conversation, you talked about levels in life. And in your book, you also talk about the seasons in life. And maybe we can choose either and define that a little bit. And I would be very interested if we go for the seasons one, which season of your life are you currently in and why is that so? But we could, of course, translate that for the levels as well. Yeah, that's, that's a great question, uh, Ismail. What season of life am I in right now? Um, personally, I think it's it's it's... I'm in that season where um, I'm looking to 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 add value, right? And and that's that's what prompted me to start this my podcast. That's what prompted me to 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 uh, to write my book. Um, it's it's really adding value. It's it's really impacting lives. It's really finding opportunities, even in the workplace, right? What moment can I find to be to add value to bring a little hope? Right, um, and I, that's you know more more philosophical, more personal development related. But um, personally, it's it's really um, finding. You know, you go through life. I mean, there were times when I was you know doing work because I just wanted a job. I wanted to get paid. After a while, it didn't. It wasn't more about that anymore. It, it wasn't more about the, the money anymore. Money is important. We all need that. We all have responsibilities, right? But I think I'm at that point where I I want meaning i want everything i do to have meaning right i don't want a job just because i want to have the opportunity to be able to impact lives right to to to, to give back um so even thinking of going back to school not just for the sake of it but um making sure that i'm whatever i'm, I'm studying now or, or getting is, is is directly related to um, uh, my, my mission, my purpose in life, which is really to help people become better, help challenging those problems and mindsets, right? And that's, that, that's where I'm in right now. And, and I'll just say a lot of people now um, are also going through that season of life where they're, they're questioning the importance of, 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 of what they do. Now, the pandemic has, has taught all of us that life is short. Many people are making... Uh, meaningful decisions. People are, you know, those who are working from home now are moving from, you know, one place to the other, maybe closer to family and, and finding that those things are, 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 are more important to them, right? So that's, for me, that, that's where I'm at right now. It's all about making those meaningful decisions, adding value, if, if that makes sense. I know it's, it's, it's rambling a little bit, but it's really, how do I add value, right, in this stage of, of life that I'm in right now? Life is short. You know, tomorrow is not guaranteed anyone. How, how do I make sure that I'm emptying myself of my gifts, of my talent? So if I'm not here, I can say, people can say, well, he, he impacted lives, right? That's, that's where I'm right now. It's philosophical. I know it's deep, but that's where I'm right now. It's about adding value. It's about impacting people. It's about impacting relationships, like what we're doing right here on this podcast. I don't get paid for my podcast, right? It may have been a time where now, you know, and people say, well, you're not doing that for money. You can make money. Yes, money is all great. But for me, it's really about giving, adding value, making, helping make someone's life better. That's 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 why I'm right now. That's the season of life I'm in right now. Um, and that makes perfect sense, definitely. And I have a follow-up question for that one because you said you want to create value to begin with. And you've mentioned relationships and lives a couple of times so for this creating value what importance does a community play and the community could be the neighborhood where you have been living for some time could be your spiritual community could be your family i don't know what comes to mind relationships are important um 
you know, I think at the end of life, at the end of the day, we're, we're all dependent on, on one on another, right? We, we, it's, it's all about the relationships. We, we can chase after, you know, all the things in life at the expense of our, of our relationships, right? Um, one of the guests that I had, and I keep bringing all these examples because I think it relates. He um, came on my podcast. He was a very success. He is still, I mean, he owned one of the biggest um, spas in, uh, in Singapore, making, you know, several millions of dollars um, per year. And he shared with me, smile that one day he was um, busy running from one meeting to the other. He had a very important client to meet. He got into his car, started his car. And was about to lift his foot off of the ground into his car and his foot wouldn't move. He was stuck. At that moment, he suffered a stroke. And this has been 10 years. Um, you know, he's still not fully recovered yet. And he came and he was sharing, you know, talking about some of these important things in life. And he was, I asked him, you know, what he could have, he would have done differently, um, knowing knowing what, what he knew now, what he knows now. And, and one of the things he said was spending more time with his family, spending more time with his daughters um which kind of uh wow that that resonated because uh, you know in that moment he you know he was making the money and trying to build this conglomerate and making all the money but some things were were suffering um and, and and so when you ask about community relationships this is why it matters and i'm not saying that we don't chase money i'm not saying that we we don't focus on on on, on you know building our our, our finances and, and, and all that those are important but Let's not do that at the expense of the things that truly matter, right? Money can come and go, but relationships, when the hurricane Ian hit Florida um, a couple months ago here, so I was watching it and seeing all these homes, beautiful homes and boats and cars and yachts this destroyed, right? These are things that people had spent their lives working for, right? People's retirement homes, and, and, that, and that's nothing wrong with that. But there was one uh, rather emotional story. There was this woman whose house had been destroyed and she was in one of these rescue boats and um, neighbors were going around, you know, the community just checking, knocking on doors just to make sure that people were. At that moment, Ismail, she said, that mattered more than anything else. The house, the cars, and the property, the furniture, and all of that were gone. But the only thing she had left was those relationships, that person coming and knocking on the door checking on her, making sure she was okay. That was powerful. Relationships matter. And I think we, we all have it backwards, right? We all put the money and all that before. But when all those things are gone, what do we have? What do we have? Community, relationships, people, they matter. No, absolutely. Relationships, community, and spending time with such. And... Fred, I do want to respect your time, and I in fact have three questions that I ask each and every of my podcast guests. But before we go there, when people would like to reach out and find out more about you as a person, how can they do so? Yeah, that's easy. My website, uh, www.fredgatti.com, it's F-R-E-D-G-A-T-T-Y.com. Um, you can send me a message there, you can contact me there, um, and you can see some of the things that I'm doing in terms of podcasting and, uh, and the work that I do. So yeah, just check out my, my, uh, website. It has links to my book, Believe Every Comment. And, you know, if you want to, you know, follow that, you can, but my website is, uh, uh, just, just a place you can, you can go in and, and, and learn more about me and what I do. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And my first of the last and final three questions is, Fred, what is an important truth for yourself that others don't know or talk about much? Hmm. An important truth about me that others don't know. Um, it's, it's, it's a great, right? I'm a very uh, laid back, right? Uh, quiet. Depends on who you ask, but uh, lately, but question, right? And so I think people often uh, misconstrue that to be um, just just someone who doesn't, you know, uh, have drive. But but I do. I, I think when I when I put my mind to something, when I'm passionate about something, you know, I, I go after it. And it's not I don't make all the noise about it, and it's not the rah rah kind. But I'm um, 
I, 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 I go, I go for what I want, um, especially, you know, based on what we talked about, if, if you know, it's, it's here, you know, that this is something that, you know, you, you've been, you've been, you've been given. I, I think it's, it's really that quiet grid. I've been called so many things like a quiet storm. These are people who just don't make so much noise, right? but they go after it, they make things happen. Right. Um, I, th I think that's one uh, thing that people may not necessarily know, uh, about me it's it's that it's a quiet storm right it's, i have i have it may not make a lot of noise about it but it, but it's there <laughs> wonderful thank you very much for sharing that and the second question would be fred who are your mentors or whom do you look up to gosh there, there's so many of them some some i haven't even met uh <laughs> Um, some, some have died, but I'm still following them by by, by reading their books. Uh, but uh, John John Maxwell is one of them. Uh, he's a great great leadership guru. I actually was fortunate enough to to meet John uh, back in 2009. I'm actually a, a Maxwell certified coach, so I had a chance of uh, meeting John Maxwell, uh, who's 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 wisdom on, on leadership. I, I I love so much, and as a leader in the workplace and leader, um, in, in the community, I, I find some of those. Uh, a lot of those lessons really that's really what's grounded me as a leader uh some of those lessons that he he he, he shares so i follow john max and there are other you know um spiritual leaders as well that i i, I follow that that i listen to um just uh you know depending on what what, what season of, of life i'm in but jim Rohn uh, is one of them jim Rohn's no longer with us but i love uh jim Rohn's books the late robert schuler um i, I still have his books on my shelf that i that i read um um, and as a spiritual person, I'm not trying to over-spiritualize this, but as a, as, a, as a spiritual person, as a Christian, um, the Bible, I mean, Jesus Christ, uh, there's so many powerful, uh, uh, you know, lessons um, uh, in the Bible that, that, that I live by. So I, I give, I give all credit uh, to, to, to God. I mean, I, you know, that's, that's the, the one, the, the number one, uh, I can admit with, without sounding overly spiritual, but, uh, First of all, my spiritual life, I think, keeps me grounded. And we have all these other earthly people um, that I, and, and I, I, I learned from everyone, Israel. I know, you know, I, sometimes I, even from my kids, you know, I, I'll run some ideas by them and I'll, I'll they'll share something. And, you know, but so it, it all depends. I listen to everyone. And um, sometimes, you know, people impact, people impact us from the least likely places, right? We just got to be open. We just got to listen and um uh, yeah, and just learn, 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 learn from everyone uh, that we can. So. Be open. Wonderful. I really like that. Thank you so much, Fred. And that leads me to my final question for today's podcast episode. And it's a rather hypothetical one. And I call it the three truths. And I would like you to imagine that you're traveling all by yourself in space. Actually, for quite some time. So a couple of months or even a couple of years. And after all that solo travel, Fred, you meet a human-like species. And they can only process three facts or three truths about humanity before they decide whether or not they want to get to know us. What do you tell them? That's a deep one. Hmm. Experience people, ex experience them. I mean, it's it's easy to to kind of sell people on ideas. Ismail, it's easy to 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 share our thoughts. It's easy to try to get people to buy into ideas. Um, and sometimes, you know, we're we're not very successful. But when people experience you for who you are. Right, it's a, a, that experiential moment. I, I think it's it's priceless. That that makes all the the difference. You know, we can try to we're 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 wired to preach to sell and all of that, but and we may be successful to some extent. But I think that moment when people experience you for who you are, trust. We're in a world where people don't trust these days. Right, trust is one of those things because well, people have been burned a lot. We've got to give people give people time. Uh, to, to know us, to, to experience it. So experiencing, I think, is, is one of them. You know, I can tell you all the things I want you to, to hear about me. I can come up with all the spinnings and all of that. But but sometimes you've got to just experience people, right? Experience people, trust comes that way. So that, that'll be one of the things that I'll say, look, I can tell you what you want to know about me. That may or may not change your 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 mindset. But, but trust me, trust, let's, 
figure it out yourself. Let's let's work together. Just get into who I am, and then and then you can make your opinions based on that, right? Uh, I think that's one of them. Uh, the second one is time. Time does a lot of things, right? We 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 travel through to space, and you know we you hear things like you know time time heals all at once, right? To some extent, but but time experience I think is one. Time does it too. Sometimes it's we talk about the seasons in life. We've just got to experience. We've just got to allow some things to, to work themselves out. Uh, time, time is one of those things, again, that, that we take for granted. So time, yes. Uh, allow, allow time. Allow yourself to, 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 to process things. Just, just give it time. Don't, don't rush things. Yes, we're in a world where we want things, you know, happening. Bam, bam, we have deadlines and all of that. Great. But, but give yourself time. Give yourself time to get to know who you are. Give yourself time to get a, experience other people time i know experience and time um go hand in hand and the last one um hmm, is just being being in the moment being in the moment living in the moment and not try to get too far yourself we have a five-year plans 10-year plans 20 plans about things and where i want to be um, in the future, right? That we miss out on the present moment. Take time to enjoy the moment. Enjoy where you are. Value where you are as you travel to where you want to get to, right? If, if all that you're focused on in the, the next five years, next two years, next years, I'm not saying that those aren't important. We need to be strategic. I, I know that. So don't, don't get me wrong here. Yes, let's have those plans. But let's enjoy the present. Let's enjoy the moment. Let's enjoy today because this is the only assurance that we have, the present moment. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. The only gift we have now is now, the present. That's why it's called the present, right? The time we have is now, so... Enjoy the moment, my friend. I trust that you've enjoyed this podcast. I try that you've gotten some I trust that you've got something good out of our discussion today, but enjoy today, my friends. Enjoy the moment. Fred, thank you so much for being a guest on the Just Another Mindset podcast. And usually I ask here for the final message, but I believe you have already nicely concluded our conversation. Anyways, if there's anything you want to share with the audience, it's all yours. First of all, I just want to thank you, uh, Isma, for, for the opportunity to, to, to get a comment and, 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 and have us share and learn from each other. Um, so thank you. And, and to, your, to your listeners and audience, I, I just want to say thank you as well for, for taking the time to, to listen to us and hopefully you've gotten something great. Uh, it's really just to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention in there. Sure, there were other things that you could have been doing, but you chose to, to listen to us or watch us today. So thank you. And uh, here's a wishing uh, as we approach the holiday season, wherever you may be, wishing um, you know the very best of the holidays, holiday season to, to you and, and your family as well. And, uh, and be well. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoy this podcast and learn from it, please feel free to share this episode with a friend or two and make sure to subscribe to the Just Another Mindset podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please use the next 10 seconds to give the Just Another Mindset podcast a rating and know that you will help me to create more meaningful content like this and also that it will help other people to find this content and get inspired as well. If there is any future topic or guest that you would like to hear more about on the Just Another Mindset podcast, please let me know by leaving a comment on YouTube or sending a mail directly to contact at ishmaelwondergarten.com. And if nobody told you lately, be reminded that you are worthy, you matter, and you can achieve anything. Just another mindset.